In today's video, guys, I'm going to show you how you can actually get super low input delay like your favorite Fortnite pros. We're gonna be utilizing a custom tool which I made myself, which you can, by the way, get for absolutely free on discord.gg slash listripes. Everything in this video you can get from there as well, or you could also get it from my official website, guys. The link to it is gonna be in the description as well. And I'm going to guide you through everything which I set up here on my PC in order to get super low input delay and as well actually physical steps on your PC case or better said PC, which can also make a huge difference when it comes down to latency on your mouse and keyboard so therefore don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and let's go and for the first and most important step guys i want to mention that the position of your usb devices on your pc actually make a huge difference i'm not going to talk about that you should utilize usb 3.0 instead of 2.0 since it actually makes zero difference guys the data transfer of mice and keyboards is so low that you get identical performance on either of those but actually what a lot of people don't know is that you have to use the right usb controller and in most pcs there are actually multiple ones and one of them is better and the second one is worse. So the position exactly where you plug in your mouse and keyboard is super important. What you want to do is get yourself the USB device tree viewer, which you can also, by the way, get on my Discord, guys. And once the tool is launched, you're going to see that right now here on the PC where I do it, guys, with a Ryzen 7 5800X, I have exactly two USB controllers. And actually, the first one on the top is a lot better than the second one. The first one has a lot lower latency, so therefore you should actually plug all your devices in here. Make sure that you find the USB root hub. It should also say probably the highest USB which your mainboard can offer. For me, it's right now here 3.0. Since this is a little bit older DDR4 build, and you can see that both of my devices are plugged into the first USB controller, into the first USB root hub. And this is exactly what you should do. And how you can find this out is kind of easy actually. You just simply have to let this program run in the background, then plug your USB maybe into another USB port, go into file and refresh, and then it's gonna tell you where exactly you put it. And then this tool is gonna automatically show you in which USB port it's actually plugged in. And always also make sure that you actually plug it into the first ones, guys. If you have multiple USB ports, always try to go here for one, two, or three. But definitely make sure, guys, that you utilize the first USB controller. This makes a huge difference, especially on AMD builds, guys. On Intel, it also does make a difference. So therefore, also there, you should make sure that you watch out for the first USB controller. There are even PCs with up to three or four of them, really depending on how many USB ports you have. If your case maybe has built-in USB extensions and all of that, but definitely make sure that you watch out for this here, guys, since this makes a huge difference how responsive actually your mouse and keyboard are on your gaming PC. Moneymaker, Asian Jeff, and many other pros are also utilizing this tool, which is called GR Booster, which is allowing them to get super low ping in Fortnite, guys. You can try it out for absolutely free with the link in the description. Even Mero, the FNCS winner, is using it, and it helped me to get only 7 milliseconds of latency in Fortnite, which is already an improvement of 60%, guys. And with the brand new adaptive intelligent routing, guys, the GR Booster is basically in the background, always going to search for the best DNS server while you're gaming, ensuring that you have the least amount of ping. You can try that for absolutely free with the link in the description. One of the most important factors is actually that a lot of people have way too many processes running on their windows. For me right now, I try to replicate a realistic scenario where I have around 130, there's even people with like over 200 processes. But for most of you guys, it's definitely gonna be well over 100 processes. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we can reduce this by a ton. So guys, and the first thing which we basically need is the Chris Titus Windows Utility Tool, which we can get from the official website. Just simply copy here the following command line and then we're gonna go here into our Windows search bar, type in that PowerShell request right click under Windows PowerShell, then just simply run it as an administrator and paste in the following code guys. Then it's going to load for you the whole entire utility tool, which is going to look exactly like this here now. And what we want to focus around guys is the tweaks section. In here now we have already recommended selections, which are basically presets with the best tweaks for your desktop PC, a laptop, minimal tweaks, or even to revert it completely again. But what we want to click on is desktop simply. And then additionally to that, I would also click under delete temporary files. Then we're already done here guys. And what we we want to do is click under run tweaks. This is going to run then in the background and you can see now that it's uninstalling all of the bloatware which is built into Windows which are uninstalling tools and all of that which we simply don't need. You can see now tweaks are finished so we can close it actually and restart our PC real quick. And after then restarting my PC you can see that my processes went down to only 85 which is already a lot better guys. I extra took a screenshot because of course I have Streamlabs OBS which in itself already has over seven processes. Then I have my mic tool and everything. I try to really give you a realistic scenario where I turn off everything entirely and I'm quite sure there's even more I could turn off in order to re go down to something like 60 which is going to make a huge difference especially on more and PCs. But this is definitely something which you should do guys and the Chris Titus Tech Utility is a super easy tool which you can utilize for that. But now let's continue actually with 
the next steps. So next up, what we're going to do guys is actually utilize my own tool, which is called Clean Cache. You can get it as well from my Discord guys, as mentioned from the Performance Packs channel. And what you gotta do is right click onto it and run it as administrator. The tool is pretty easy to use. And I basically turned this into a hub where you can delete any sort of temporary data. First of all, under temporary files, we have basically temp, you know, like the normal casual one, which you probably also clean already on your PC once in a while, or you should definitely. We have prefetch files. We have something like Windows log files, memory dump files, and as well, Windows delivery optimization files and DirectX shader cache. And actually for a lot of people, especially if they maybe didn't update their GPU driver for a very long time, cleaning something like a DirectX shader cache can be super useful. It's basically temporary data for your GPU so it knows what to load specifically in Fortnite, but these data are sometimes corrupted, actually causing stutter. It's going to take actually for your Fortnite one or two games to actually again rebuild these, but then afterwards it should run way smoother. So therefore what we're gonna do in the first place is actually clean the entire temporary data here of my PC, just like that with actually putting the number, you know, the equivalent one, and then it did it already. Then I'm also actually going to clean here prefetch files real quick from my PC as well. And then we're gonna do the shader cache. So shader cache is also now completely actually deleted. And then we can actually exit the tool. As mentioned, this is a really handy one in my opinion. And you can definitely just simply leave it on your desktop for once in a while. Whenever you feel like, hey, I wanna clean up my PC, it feels a little bit laggier, you know, it's not as snappy as it was. So therefore just simply maybe keep it on your desktop somewhere around like I do, and then you're already good to go. Again, guys, keep in mind, you now cleaned actually your DirectX shader cache. So for the first one, two, three games, the game might actually load a little bit longer. Textures are gonna need a little bit longer, but then afterwards you kind of have something like a clean copy. Like the first time when you loaded up Fortnite on your PC, you know, it also took like one, two games to actually be fully optimized. And then afterwards it's running again, super smooth. So guys, and now I'm of course also going to cover the best in-game settings to really make sure that you have the least amount of input delay. By the way, if you want a free build or 1v1, I can highly recommend you my low and 1v1 map. It literally has the least amount of input delay out of all 1v1 maps and it still looks pretty decent. You have all of the weapons which you need, shield and everything, so therefore check it out. But yeah, for the actual settings themselves guys, I want to showcase you real quick that I'm of course here playing right now on my Nvidia card on the performance mode. This is super important guys. On Nvidia and Intel you should definitely utilize performance mode. But on the other hand, if you're on an AMD card or AMD integrated graphics, where I also see a lot of people playing on these, make sure that you actually utilize DirectX 12. For the rest guys, of course try to upset to 7. This is just like a cosmetical thing. But yeah, for the rest of these settings, you also want to make sure that you put everything as low as possible. And what I also recommend a ton of people, if they maybe don't want to utilize actually a stretch resolution, is to put your 3D res to anything lower than 100%. Like even like 90 is still super playable and looks really, really good. Like you guys can definitely see, I have literally like zero delay here right now while free building. And yeah, it's just simply really, really smooth. So therefore, as mentioned, these are the best in-game settings for literally zero input delay. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe guys. And also make sure to check out the two videos which are right here on screen as well.